Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today I'm pretty excited because today I am going to be building one of the biggest projects I've ever built here on the Making Stuff channel, and that is a four by eight CNC router. Now, before I can build this machine, I'm gonna to have to have some place to put the behemoth. So I think what I'm gonna do is just clean out this corner where I've got a whole bunch of my woodworking tools I haven't touched in well over a year. But before I do that, I need to head over to the steel store before they close. So it's a nice, bright, sunny day, perfect day for a drive and to go do some steel shopping. So I've got this whole area cleaned out right here and I've got a big pile of trash right there that I think I'll burn in the wood burning stove. So I am ready to start building this machine right here. All right, before I start welding on this steel and assembling this CNC machine, I need to check the pieces of steel to see if they have a bow or a bend to it. Because the steel did come from a steel mill, it didn't come from a machine shop. Now the problem I've got is I don't have a flat surface big enough to put these pieces of steel on to check them and see how flat they are. I know the concrete floor in the shop is by no means flat. There's cracks and bends in the concrete and I found that out uh, on the CNC plasma video that I made a while back. If you want to go back and watch that, you can see some of the problems I ran into with the pieces of steel not being straight. And I've also got my little assembly table or the welding table that I built, and I know that that's flat. I can even adjust the uh, pieces and the slats to make it flat, but the problem with that is it's not big enough for these large pieces of steel. So I've come up with a way to check these for uh, bends and bows. So let's head over here and I'll show you exactly how I'm gonna do that. So what I have done is I've taken some vice grips and a piece of string and I have stretched that piece of string the whole length of this piece of steel. And I've also got it as tight as I could get it. So that's almost banjo tight there. So now what I can do is I can check the gap between the piece of steel and the string and see how straight or bent this piece of steel is. And I'm gonna check that gap using some feeler gauges. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide these underneath the piece of string and see if it catches. Now you've gotta do it flat, you don't wanna bend it. So this will slide under there. So this is a 3 thousandths feeler gauge. So I know the gap in between there is at least three thousandths. So now I'm going to move up to a four and the four will also slide under there. So now let's try the five. All right. So the five is catching. You can see it catch that piece of string when it goes, when I try to slide it under there. So I know that the gap between this piece of steel and the string is about four thousandths. That's not bad at all, that's very workable, and I don't think that's gonna cause me any problems when I go to use this piece of steel when I assemble the machine. All right, so I've got my pieces cut to length and I know how much of a bend is in them. There's one more thing I need to do before I start welding these. And that is, I need to make sure that all of these pieces are in the same plane. Now let's say this plane card is my tabletop. I want it to be perfectly flat, so that means all four of the corners would be inside of the same plane. I certainly don't want one end of my tabletop to be bent or to have a twist in the tabletop. I want it perfectly flat. So how am I going to get 
all four of these pieces accurately in the same plane. I'm going to do that by using this laser level. Now how this is going to work is I've got that laser level shining that laser over this beam here. Now that laser is a straight line. So I will find where on this ruler the laser hits by using this square. And I will do this for all four corners. And then I will adjust each corner accordingly using these playing cards. Now playing cards make excellent shims because they're almost always ten thousandths of an inch thick. That also means they're about 0.25 millimeters. So that means it only takes four of these to make a millimeter or ten of them to make an inch. And I've got that laser all set up right now and it's kind of playing havoc with my camera lens. It's not near as bright as it appears on the screen. So it's very easy for me to read this. So all I need to do right now is go around to each corner and just make sure it's set to the same height here on the ruler. And then I know that I've got all four corners in the same plane. All right, so I've gone through here and I've checked all four of these corners on this machine. And I'm ready to weld because they are all in the same plane. And I know the accuracy of the flatness of this tabletop is going to be within the thickness of one playing card. And that's not bad for a hobby machine. All right, so I've got this whole tabletop welded together. Everything is square and in the same plane. And I know some of you guys are gonna wonder, why did I add this extra rail right here? And there's a good reason for that. It's because I'm gonna be using MDF or plywood for my spoil board, and this is the eight foot mark. Now, I did need to make the machine, the rails go a little bit past the limits of the machine. And that's because the gantry has to go past the limit of the machine because the router is going to be mounted to the front of the gantry and not in the middle of the gantry. So that means to get the router to the eight foot mark, the gantry would have to go past the eight foot mark. So I did make this uh, machine a little bit longer than eight feet and it is five feet wide instead of four feet, but the limits of the machine are four by eight feet, and that extra space is to allow the gantry to move and get the router to the uh, limits of the machine. Okay, so this wasn't designed to be a floor-mounted CNC machine, so I need to get it up off of the floor, so I think what I'm going to do now is weld some legs onto it. All right, so it's the next day, and you can see here I have made some table legs off of camera and on these legs I've also welded a quarter inch piece of steel and then drilled and tapped a half inch hole in that steel. Now the reason I did this is so I can put a half inch bolt 
on the bottom of each leg on the table and that will allow me to adjust the corners and the midsection and get the table level and I'm also hoping that it will allow me to adjust some of the bend out of that main rail that I showed you earlier in the video with the piece of string. Now I've also flipped the table upside down and I've got my fireball tool squares out at opposing 90 degree angles and that is so I can weld these legs on good and straight. So let me get those welded on and hopefully when I'm done this thing doesn't weigh too much for me to flip it back right side up. All right, so I was able to finally flip this over right side up by myself. There for a second, I didn't think I would be able to do it. And also, if you look right here in the corner behind that expanded metal, I've got a full unused sheet of plywood, so I need to dig that out of the corner from behind all that mess, and I'm going to use it for the top surface of my machine. All right, so that wasn't too bad. I got my piece of plywood up here, so now I've got a flat surface for my tabletop. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my laser and I'm going to go around to all four corners and then this midsection, and I'm going to level this table out. And I'm going to do that by turning the bolts that I installed on the bottom of the table legs. All right, so I fired up the laser level and I went around to all of the corners and the midsection and I made sure that the machine was level and in the same plane. Now I was not able to get rid of the bow that these uh, side rails had in them, but that's okay because this plywood is by no means flat and it does have a bow in it itself. Now this isn't going to be my spoil board. When I finish the machine, I'm going to put a piece of MDF on top of here. That will be my spoil board. And what I'll do is I'll put a surfacing bit in the spindle and then we will surface that spoil board and get it in the same plane as the machine. But that is going to be an upcoming later video. So if you made it this far in this video, that means you must like it. So please give me that big thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.